if Vermont su succeeds in moving in this direction, the United States of America is done. Well, that's what happened in the Soviet Union. Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania uh, started the ball rolling, yep. and then it all broke up. Yep. It's all right. It's time. But I, I take a, a slightly different, uh, considerably different position from you. Uh, I, I huh, how shocking. <laughs> I, I identify with Martin Luther King and uh, yeah, so do I. Gandhi. Uh, so do I. And I, I'm absolutely determined that uh, any effort at secession must be peaceful. Yeah. Um, Look, I agree. You do that till you do that. You do it till you can't do it anymore. You do it and you do it and you do it. But that still leaves an aggressive entity that you don't know what they're going to do. So how do you handle that problem? I don't know. Well, I can tell you that some of us will be absolutely passive and some of us will not. And I can't tell you which side I'm going to be on. But as senators, as, uh, as part of the legislature, we can uh, take an official position. And uh, my, uh, I, I think the official position should be that we would disband the uh, any Vermont militia, and and we uh, we vote for secession, and let the vote stand, and everybody can see it. And now, if the if Washington refuses to let us go, why there's nothing we can do. We're little Vermont, and they're big, the big empire. Uh, but at least everyone can see where we stand. And I think the the force of uh, public opinion or worldwide opinion, uh, would I would rely upon that rather than any effort at, at, uh, at uh, self-defense. <laughs> okay, I hear you. So the people at home... I wouldn't be voting to disband any militias. I wouldn't be voting for any sort of gun control. I wouldn't be voting for any of that. Um, well, I'm a member of the NRA, and I believe in gun ownership, but, yeah. uh, but I, the, it would be prudent, I think, to disband the, the militia so that there would not be any, uh, even if, uh, if the uh, federal government sent in the army, what could they do? There's no, no, no one to fight. Well, Ethan Allen would greatly disagree with you, and so will I, but it doesn't matter. I still like you. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, and neither do you. Um, but I would absolutely uh, hope that um, we could responsibly become our own country and have the mother country accede to that. But if they do, they lose their empire. Yes, it's a difficult question. Yeah. I think what, what, what the founders suggested that they were pledging. You know, well, the, Brit, the British suggested that the founders were, of course, terrorists and traitors. Um, but the founders made it very clear that they thought they were in the right, and I think they were, and that they were pledging their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honors. Let's not imagine that we can commit less. If you take this step, if the state of Vermont takes this step, it is a serious matter. And uh, I'm in favor of taking the step. I wouldn't go that far, though. I'm, I'm not, uh, uh, I wouldn't take the risk that uh, we would get involved in uh, a violent conflict. Mm. Yeah. When, you, when you're talking about 600,000 people, there isn't any way to, there, there isn't really a good way to control that risk. The risk is there. I had uh, Robert Wagner here uh, uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, he's running for uh, the state senate from Addison County. Yes, he is. And uh, I know him well. I like him very much. We had a really good conversation. Some of the things we talked about. Uh, were um, how Vermont would fund the government uh, and uh, the social contract. Uh, what do you think about uh, the problem of, of funding? Uh, well, first of all, you've got about a billion and a half that goes to these wars. 
and you're not sending that or any federal taxes to the federal government if you have seceded. So you've got more, but you've got, a, you've got the billion and a half for war. The rest of it um, goes to support the other things the government does, the federal government does. You're keeping that here, so that goes to you know, whatever you're doing, education, agriculture, and so on. Um, you have also, as Robert points out, numbers of major corporations here extracting resource. Groundwater is one, uh, hydropower is another, um, and for which essentially they pay nothing. You should capture that, and as a country you could capture it, and we do it ourselves, either privatize it among Vermont businesses and entities, or we do it as our as the community of Vermont, and to the extent that, you know, extraction industries are taking product out of Vermont and making things with it, the people of Vermont should be compensated for that. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of revenue right there. Not having to do a lot of the things that the federal government now makes us do that are stupid and wasteful, there's a lot of money there. I bet you there's four and a half billion to five billion dollars immediately available to an independent Vermont that is not now available to us. It's extracted. Now, how do you raise the, the monies that you do need? Uh, I'm, not re I'm not really prepared to go there. I, I don't think people are very interested in that topic, and I am not expert at it myself. But we do it now. So I think we could work something out, and we would have five billion more then than we have now. It's it's a you know you, you will find economists that say we get more from the federal government in Vermont than we pay. That is a load of crap. That is not so, not true. No I mean, state gets more from the federal government, not even close than they pay in. No state. And if you have an economist who wants to debate me on that, send him on in here, because we're going to chew his butt off. That's a damn load of crap. I think it's very important to protect uh, uh, programs like Social Security and, uh, and Medicare. An independent Vermont would have, a, yes. have yes. our own Social Security and Medicare. Wouldn't yes. It? Oh, sure. I think so. I, I think those are good programs. I think people want them and need them. Sure. Um, we would also, because we're individuals contracting with the, with the uh, United States government, I mean, I have a contractual right, we all do, um, to receive the benefits of what we have paid into that system. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have federal things here that, they, you know, <laughs> that have been paid for by some of the rest of the people in the country, and there would have to be some adjustments for sure. Uh, we're currently in an economic crisis. Do you think uh, a recovery is, is on the way, or are we going to sink deeper into uh, economic problems? Well, you can get every opinion under the sun, of course. I, my, my view is we are in crisis. You will see at least a double dip, very severe depression, if not collapse. Sorry, that's what I think is going to happen. Um, we, we have organized our entire world economy in all developed countries, so-called developed countries, that is, westernized technology-using countries. We have organized all of that around cheap oil. And we have pushed world population up approaching seven billion people. That's like, look at organisms in a Petri dish, you know, in the, in the bio lab. You have so many organisms in a Petri dish, you have so much nutrient you put in there. You keep adding nutrient, the numbers of organisms build and build and build, and all the permutations build. All of a sudden, the nutrient is unavailable or very restricted because it's so expensive. You get a 
huge collapse. You get a huge die-off. That's how it works. That's how organic history works. We are not exempt. There are way too many people on this planet. We absolutely need to do voluntary but very, very, very thoroughgoing birth control and population control. It has to be done.